Hello, everyone, and welcome to Opus 15. I am here for another set review of this brand new Opus, and I am joined by Mr. Eureka himself, Jared Wallace. Jared, how are you, sir? Hey, then. I'm good. Thanks for having me on, as always. You bet. I always appreciate having another perspective, because it's always nice to have someone who sees the cards in a way I didn't even think about. So, folks, we're going to jump right into it. You know, well, this first video will have three elements, then we'll have part two and other three elements, and we'll wrap up in that last one. Uh, just as a heads up, there are a few cards that generally I just don't think there's really much to say about. I kind of view them as pack fodder, so I will kind of skip past those. Uh, of course, if you have any questions or anything, you can leave it in the comments below, but for the most part, we'll just mention ones that we kind of have something to say about. So, shall we get into it? Yep. All right, there are a couple reprints in this set. I won't be mentioning any of those either. Uh, so this first one, we have a Sky Warrior. Again, I kind of think this is pack fodder, so I'm going to just skip right past yeah. it. Same with this Sky Samurai. Only thing we're saying is, no, it doesn't work with any of the other Samurais, so don't try to yeah, say that. Yeah, I don't even... Why did we need to do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? So let's get to something we actually want to talk about, which is Edgar. This is our first six backup. Edgar has only had one forward, I believe, and he had another backup version. And generally, you're kind of just happy to have a six backup. And this guy has a pretty nice effect for a two cost and that, especially if you're targeting a six character. If you're targeting a six character that could attack that turn, if you're thinking Opus 4 lock, now it's going to be a 10k that's also going to nuke something when it attacks. That's pretty nice. What do you think? There's a lot of a lot more six stuff going on in the set than uh, we had originally seen when uh, this card was revealed. So there's probably something going on there. Uh, six decks are maybe gonna miss the other Edgar a little bit, but you know, six decks were never part of the. They haven't been. That, that hasn't been like a thing that you think about since like Opus Nine or whatever. So yeah. it's not a big deal. Uh, the other big thing about this card is that it's a strict upgrade over the other Edgar as a Claris fire backup. Oh. Um, hmm. Before we just played the other Edgar just because it, it was the only backup that Claris uh, could search in fire. But now this one actually maybe you know maybe the three K pump matters like point one yeah. percent of games or whatever. But it, it is just a strict upgrade. So it'll definitely see play. Uh, whether or not it'll see play for the other effect is kind of up in the air. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned Claris. I hadn't even considered that. So moving past Edgar, we've got Guy. It's kind of hard to judge this whole Rebel package just because it's it's kind of new. But especially I was thinking, I think with Guy and just Maria on the field, Guy goes up to a 10K, I believe. Because I think he gets two yeah. from Maria, plus he gets two from his own effect. So again, it's kind of hard for me to say about this one just because they're new. I'd have to try them out. It doesn't like blow me away with, wow, it must have this great power. But there's still something interesting there. And I love the artwork. I think the artwork's really nice. It's kind of like if they were to like remake Martian Ritz, but like... For the current era, but also like not like it's just too late kind of thing. Yeah. So it's like, uh, you know, Martian Ritz kind of doesn't keep up because you can't search the Ritz or whatever. And it, this is going to have the same issues in that it's in Firewind, uh, you know, with the guy grabbing Leon or uh, Maria. The the Leon, it needs damage three to go off. So it's too late. And then uh, yeah. guy, he obviously gets he gets 2k. But if you grab uh, for, for whatever, so he could be like an 8k if he grabs Leon, but then you don't have the Maria out. So you kind of like the dream is to go guy into Leon on damage three and then get the Maria. Yeah. And then you like everything is really huge. And then when you swing, you get to draw a bunch of cards and just like it, it, it probably feels really awesome when it works. And this is the kind of thing that I could have seen working back in, you know, like uh, Opus 11 kind of times, maybe early Opus 12. Uh, but, you know, once we got into, like, Opus 13, we we're talking about, you know, Sophie and stuff like that. This is the kind of thing that just, like, probably doesn't cut it anymore. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see this in, like, L3 or L6, you know, when those events uh, start coming back in the West. Uh, this seems like a really solid package there where you actually get to play the game. So, <laughs> man, oh, man, we have Cyan here. I mean, for Samurais, what a cool card. Why is it named Cyan? Why does it directly yeah. clash with the other main engine of Samurais? I'm sure that was intentional. I'm a huge fan of Amano Art, so I adore this card. I adore all the Amano Art we got. Oh, and that damage five ability. Good gravy. Just remove a forward from the game. Yeah. If they've got something that's sticky, like, cool. Like, uh, do you run both of these? Do you run one over the other? How do you see Cyan? Yeah, I think you run both. Uh, so one of the big reasons that S Samurais fell off it, it, it kind of couldn't kill Arden. 
against the the Sophie decks in Opus 13, and then in Opus 14 it was just way too slow compared to Doga. And mm -hmm. and the reason it was too slow is because even though Samurai's has a lot of anti aggro tools, the way that like other mono fire decks do, you know, you have Blaze, you have the Palums, like these backups that kill stuff. And then once you get the Cyan and Tenzin rolling, you can deal all of the AOE. But if they played Doga on turn one. Like you just, you, there's just no way to kill it, right? The, the Samurai's has no way to 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 do anything after the Doga has resolved. Like if you have the Amaterasu, that's great, but that's also putting you behind a turn, right. and so it, it's it kind of spirals out of control really quickly for them. Now I think that this Cyan does something that Samurai's couldn't do before, in that when the Doga comes down, on, if you go first and you just play backup or you just play tens or whatever, and your opponent plays Doga and Mashri or whatever, you can just discard your hand to play the cyan and that'll set them back two turns because not only do you kill the doga but they're gonna have to bounce the cyan before they start making a new board so they're gonna have to play mashri or or and and remove the three summons to bounce the cyan back to your hand so uh i think this kind of gives samurai's new legs to stand on in the current meta but i think you have to play this but you also can't like not play the old cyan yeah so i think it's just gonna be the case where they're this cyan is better in the first few turns of the game when all the, these pivotal interactions are really uh, setting the pace for the rest of the game. Yeah. And where a samurai's would just be dying a lot of the time. Uh, and then the older cyan is going to be better for closing out the games, you know, with the repeated AoE. That's that's like the inevitability that cyan is going to have or that uh, samurai's is going to have against the aggro decks. And so you kind of have to play both. Uh, it's not super ideal. Like, obviously, we would prefer that they have different names, yeah. but... Uh, it's not going to be a problem enough of the time that uh, since they're both must kill cards, you'll probably be okay with with the name clash. Yeah, and being a must kill card, I, I do appreciate that this one has a big body at least because it was very easy yeah, to pick off huge. that other cyan. <laughs> you know, it's just a six. Yeah. Game, so. All right, yeah. we're just hoping for cyan. So next we have a backup samurai. This is one of our, our new crystal generators. Uh, I guess I'll kind of mm -hmm. talk about them all right here because every element got this 2CP backup, sure. that's a standard unit, it enters, gets you a crystal, and then it has another effect that's usually based on, you know, whatever its element is. Uh, all the elements have these kind of crystal cards. Obviously, these will probably be important if you're trying to do any crystal stuff this opus, because there isn't really a whole lot of crystal generation out there. Yeah. So, yeah. But in this one, of course, in Samurai specifically, is just another card named Samurai you can play. For the crystal generators in general, I think a lot of people are confused about how we should be evaluating them. I've, like, I've gone full circle where like I thought, okay, this is in vanilla. It doesn't do anything to like, okay, a crystal. If a crystal is two CP, then this uh, is going to generate you two CP. So it's a free backup. Is and but that's also like not quite accurate. And so like I've, I've kind of gone around where like crystal maybe crystals count as CP only when you consume them. So mm -hmm. it doesn't really help to think about this as uh, a card like a, a zero CP backup. Yeah. Uh, in general, it, it's it's more like it's a backup that enables your crystal cards to work later. And so it's, it's like a tax that you have to pay basically to playing these. Yeah. If you want to play the crystal cards, you, you have to play the crystal generation backups because there's just no other good way to get crystals right now. You should mostly think of them as vanillas that you're kind of like forced to play as a tax. For the samurai in particular, obviously this is probably like the best one <laughs> because uh, like samurais, just, we would just play it if it was just a, a vanilla two yeah. CP samurai anyways. So. Uh, yeah, we, this is probably uh, the best one in that we get a crystal for, for, for a card that we would just already put in our deck. And yeah, right. it, it's just kind of killing two birds with one stone in this one. So I'll be curious to see if anyone puts a crystal generator into their or a crystal user into their samurai deck because none of the samurais naturally use them. So we'll see if people or yeah. if again, like you said, they just want it for the name. So, yeah, I think we'll get to that with the card with two cards from now. Yeah. Okay, so next we have <laughs> Shadow, uh, which I I have to admit, I, normally I'm not a huge fan of this, like, Dissidia uh, cartoony artwork, but I really like this one. I think Interceptor just looks really adorable here. That said, I, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the card. Like, if, if you want more crystals, again, this is obviously a way to get crystals. You get them on a burst. I believe every element also got a crystal generator that has an EX burst tied to it. I'm pretty positive about that. And then yep. I guess my only last comment for Shadow here is like, I kind of just wish he naturally had haste. Like, I don't know. I don't see why he, you have to pay a fire for that. Like, I don't know. And and are you running this in the six deck over the other Shadow with the, I don't think you would. So I don't know. 
this is pack filler to me. This is like a draft card, and, but still, you know, it's a black belt. It's yeah. uh, it gives you a a, shot, a crystal on EX burst, but not only do you have to, if you think about the crystals as as CP as we do, not only do you have to wait for it to die to get the crystal, you then have to wait for the crystals to generate into CP later in the game. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's never going to be like a two CP eight K or whatever. Like it, it, that's just not a, a good way to evaluate it. So this card's useless. I think um, it's it's awful. Bye shadow. Yeah, bye shadow. <laughs> Next we have... But, the, but Interceptor looks great. Yeah, yeah, I, I love the art. <laughs> so next we finally have Bahamut from FF13. Well, I guess we technically had him in Opus 1 because uh, Fang was riding him on the Legend version. But still, uh, again, this is another new line of summons we've gotten that every element has a summon that if you pay a crystal, you can reduce their cost by 2. So this is Fire's version, and he's just straight up nuke something for 9k. Does this make the cut? What do you think? It does make the cut. Fire is in this weird place where it's kind of like always had the same slot and none of the cards have really been great for it. So like it used to be like Ifrit 3, the the, the Amano R hero one that did 8k and then buff your stuff by 2k. Like we played that all the way back from like WAF days and yeah. it's just like kind of gotten a little bit weaker every set until it's just like, okay, this just doesn't make the cut anymore. Yeah. Then we started playing the five drop Bahamut because it's it does the 8k on EX burst and their move is pretty useful. And then sometimes it gets reduced. Um, but what we really wanted was just four CP deal 9k. Yeah. Because you're you really just want to discard two cards or whatever it is. Uh, whenever something it when you just need to you need to kill something. You need to nuke it or whatever. Five is just too expensive for that job, but four is basically where that's getting done. And uh, the difference between 8k and 9k has become totally huge. Yeah. Um, and then in Samurai's in particular, you know, you get the you get the crystal for free. So oh, sometimes true. it'll be cheaper. So yeah, it, it, I, I think it just makes a cut in Samurai's. Uh, I wouldn't be. I, it's not like a three of or whatever. But uh, Moody, if you play Moody in the deck, it's also going to activate the Moody because it's a card named Muhammad. So sometimes it's like between one and four cost at any given point in time so you know that's pretty that's pretty good pretty flexible uh it, it always works when you use card from hand you don't have to like uh be on a certain amount of damage or whatever and it doesn't have ex burst but you know that's that's just one of the trade-offs of the card so yeah i wouldn't be surprised if we see like a couple copies of this in samurais uh a couple copies of this in mono fire awesome going I'm forward excited to see where he goes uh, so next we have some awesome art with Vargas. Uh, great first battle yeah, where yeah. you get Saban in your party on Mount... I can't remember what the name of that mountain was in Final Fantasy VI. But anyway, more Final Fantasy VI love. At first, when I read this effect, I was kind of like, I don't know, that's kind of situational, but he is a monk. So if you are playing him in monks, you can very easily sack a monk off with Ursula, have her use her effect. Now Vargas is online. Granted, we've never really seen a whole lot of Fire Earth monks, People really pr yeah. tend to prefer Earth Monks. I know you played it a lot last set, especially things like Sophie. So I don't know if this is worth leaning into Fire uh, just to get that effect. And if you're not using him in Monks, I don't know. It's hard to see where else he would fit. This definitely has to go in Monks, but also there's just not enough there. There's not enough meats to the Fire Earth Monks. I can't imagine ever wanting to drop, you know, like Anna Crow and Titan and Mont Leonis and like these really, really solid, you know, mono Earth cards. Uh, to play, you know, Vargas. <laughs> All right, we got our first legend of the set. This is Palum, uh, one of our lovely mages from Final Fantasy IV. And this card, so obviously he works well with his sister Porum. I'm sure some yeah. people will do some Firewater uh, Palum Porum decks because then they'll both get double counters every turn. Uh, his obviously biggest weakness is that he's just such a tiny body. You know, assuming you're playing him by yourself, yeah. you play him main phase two, even if he lives, you know, to their turn. He's only a 5k. He's really easy to get rid of. That being said, if you can ever get to the point where he gets three counters on him, I mean, nuking something for 8k for free on both your turn and their turn, I don't think that's anything to sneeze at. You know, that's a higher uh, Stern Leonis effect. But is he going to get to that point? Ugh, I, I, yeah. I struggle to see that happening, but I would love to be wrong. I, I heard a lot of people were like talking about like how like, okay, maybe the Palom is just okay as a zero CP deal 2k. That's, that's not going to cut it for me. Uh, <laughs> I think Palum is basically only playable once you get the three counters versus his sister, which we'll probably talk about a little bit later. Yep. But, you know, spoiler alert, the sister is... Porum is playable, like, uh, just by itself. Like, you don't need to get to the three counters, but Palum is, like, not quite there. Uh, you know, maybe if we ever get into, like, one of these, like, hyper aggro, you know, like, 
MTG vintage style stuff where like dealing one in, in vintage is like good enough against a lot of stuff because uh, things have one toughness, right? So it, if we get to the point in F FFTCG where everything is like a one CP 2K with value on it and Palom yeah. just is just says nuke something every turn, that's that's when this card will be good. Until then, I just don't think it's quite there. Um, that being said, it's going to be cool to see Palamporum decks being tried again, even if they're not, you know, really going to yeah. make it. I don't know if it's a fire versus water thing or what. Like, why does Palom always get the crummier card and then Porum <laughs> always gets the better <laughs> one? Yeah. Know. All right. Moving on, we've got Ferris, uh, which has nothing to do with the last Ferris, which was uh, just a lovely Warrior of Light engine that I personally enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, this is like a Viking Storm Ferris. You know, you can bring back basically a two cost and a one or a 2000 power and a 1000 power to 1000 powers. Uh, I, this card is definitely not for me. So I kind of just like blew past it, but I, I have a few friends that I know would love this cause they love playing Vikings. They love playing those little small, small bodies. And I have to admit her special is kind of neat. <laughs> I don't know how reliable it is, but it's just a neat uh, idea is that pirate storm and I, they all come in on their swashbuckles and yeah. So neat card. That's all I can say about it. It, it, it's, it's quite puzzling that this card is in fire, right? <laughs> it's like maybe they, maybe they wanted us to play Firewater Vikings or something like that, but like the card is basically unplayable with the current card pool. Um, like you're never play, paying six to play this and then getting a, yeah. like an Alua back in fire, right? So I, I think that like we wanted this to be a water card to be really excited about it in any capacity because like I would just play it as a, like a. So you play Ferris, and then you get to bring back Layla, and then Layla brings back the Viking, or you can get two Vikings or whatever. Like, it makes a lot of sense when you do it that way. But like, when you look at it from a fire perspective, you're just like, when am I ever gonna want to play this card? Yeah. <laughs> it's just uh, a little, a little puzzling. Um, but you know, maybe there's going to be more of these like 1,000, 2,000, yeah. 3,000 power forwards coming, and maybe at that point, you know. Ferris has some really strong turn one, turn two interactions going on in the future. Uh, for now, I think it's a little underwhelming. Uh, I don't think we're going to be very excited to draw this card at, at many points in the game. Uh, but yeah, the special is really cool. Uh, it's also really confusing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had, I, had to read it, I had to read it like three times. Like they want us to do what? Like how many how many steps do I have to take to figure out how much damage I want to do to something? Like. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really cool, and like once you understand how it works, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe one day this card is going to be like one of the things that we that we look forward to building around. Uh, but we just don't have the card pool to support it right now. Yeah. Yep. All right, Ferris, we'll see where you go. So following that up, we have our next legend. This is Furion. A lot of people were hyped on this card when I first saw it. I really wasn't. I have to admit, I, I still am not. And, and and a big part of that is just because you know I don't truly understand how these crystals are going to play out until i've gotten my hands on them and he's so crystal reliant like i don't know again maybe if you've got crystals coming out the wazoo you can use that second effect all the time but it just yeah. it, from what i've seen it seems like they're still going to be somewhat limited in their generation so like you want to get that first effect of course give him you know 8k haste first strike draw your card back that's really nice but I don't know. I, I, is it just me? I, I kind of feel underwhelmed by this card. I think this is like the baseline stat stick for what they intend uh, uh, crystals to be used as. So like they're saying, okay, so if you go through, if you jump through the hoops of building a deck that gets to generate crystals, then the, then you can always count on the crystal being 2 CP because they say draw card. And then you can also get some you know additional effect with... Uh, in the in Ferian's case, it's 1k haste for strike. And it's just like a... So if you think about it like that, uh, as long as you can pay the crystal, it's a 1 CP 8k, 8K haste with first strike. And you know, that's like, that's... We would play that. It's very yeah. solid. Uh, the problem is, you know, we're looking at the set and we're like, okay, Fire has, uh, let me see, three crystal generators and uh, one of them is playable, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so like when, you, when you're looking at it through that lens, it's like, well, okay, Ferian's unplayable. But you know... Maybe, you know, we look one to two sets down the line. Fire just has like four, let's say four crystal generators that are just good. Maybe foot me, you know, maybe even five. Now, would you play this in a mono fire when it's like, you can pretty reasonably a good amount of the time, like on turn one or two, or sorry, maybe two or three, I guess, play this at with all of its text? Well, I think, yeah, maybe at that point you would. And I think that's what they're trying to sell us on crystals. Yeah, uh, but I think we just we don't have the generation to support this in in mono fire. So uh, you're gonna have to play at least two colors, and then it kind of starts to look lackluster compared to some of the other options for crystal generation. 
So I think this card will maybe, uh, it's maybe a little underwhelming now, and it will uh, continue to improve as the volume of crystal cards and crystal generators and crystal consumers goes up. Appreciate that insight. And also got to give a shout out. This is, I think, our first card with uh, dual jobs. That's something they've put on this set. Oh, yeah. Because Furion forever, I know. Is he a warrior? Is he a rebel? Like, I feel like his job has gone back and forth so many times. So it's nice that he fits with his yeah. fellow rebels. If you want to make a warrior deck, you can stick him in there, too. So nice to see that, finally. Yeah, and it, it is worth noting. Guy can get him, too, Yeah. if you have the crystals. So, yeah, it's like another solid way to get some of the value back from the heavy cost that Guy generates. And, you know, you get a haster and guy gets bigger absolutely so next we have Bryn Helder it's funny when I this card got spoiled the day after I filmed my interview with Alex Hancox talking about Opus 14 and he said removal is in a weird spot because a lot of it is inefficient you know it'd be nice if there was a removal that like not only killed the guy also like drew you a card <laughs> and then this came out the next day yeah. I was like, wow it's like he yeah. summoned it uh so because of that I'm kind of high on this card there's a lot of things like Ceramobius and Ursula a lot of 5Ks that this should take out on site, and then again, it just replaces itself, which is really nice. Uh, at the same time, I could also see if you're just going against stuff that's too big, it's just not going to do enough on its own. So if you look at similar cheap removal up until now, it's either... So it's, it's going to be like 5K or like kill something in the 5K range, whether whatever that means. So like uh, for like Odin 3, that's like... It's cost two or less, yeah. right? And so for Ifrit 1, it's like 6K at the one and uh so it's always been like deal this chunk of damage or kill this specific thing at the cost of like net one cp yeah so it's the ifrit is always going to be one the odin is always going to be because it draws you the card back as long as it resolves one and so that kind of makes it uh you're, you're always losing out when you when you remove cards like that brinhilder is the first time that we ever get a card that can trips as as it kills something right like you as long as you kill it then this was a zero cost summon basically because you get the co the cost back with the card that you've drawn. And so this is the first time maybe that like you can actually remove a Ceramobius for f like at the cost that the Ceramobius was. Like before if you wanted to remove the Ceramobius, you had to you were like losing out on the CP exchange, right? Because you had to pay 1 CP for their 0 CP. Now you can pay 0 CP for their 0 CP. That being said, you know you have to kill the card and so like that that makes things a little bit yeah. awkward when you like look at it with moshery where they're gonna just bounce the card and then you're not gonna get to draw a card and whatnot uh that being but it's still better than a lot of or maybe any of the options that we had up until now yeah uh and like in samurais and whatnot i think that this will uh immediately replace if it won basically it, it's just a strict upgrade i think uh, and, you know, it works well with, you know, uh, if things get out of reach of Cyan or whatever, like when you attack with the Cyan or Blaze or whatever, it's a very easy combo. It works very well with Terra, works very well with uh, uh, Ifrit Lord of the Inferno. And, uh, yeah, I expect to see this is like the new baseline of removal, like small removal spells. All right. Next, we have Bwagi, first of our headhunters. You know, uh, uh, these cards that had like no impact on me in Opus 9 when they kind of first came out. But the one thing that makes me at least interested in them is that they were all have this text of that. They all get these like counters, these headhunter counters, but or bounty counters is what they call them. But they're yeah. never tied to a single card. You can actually put them on like. Yeah, all yeah. the headhunters, and then you can pull them off of all the headhunters. So that alone makes me interested to see what they would do. This is kind of one of those things that I'm going to have to see the whole package to know how good it really is. But just that alone, right. that because to me that was always an issue, like with Edge and Ninjas, was that Edge everything was piled into Edge. Once Edge got off the field, well, you lost all those Shuriken counters. But it's nice that well, no, if you stack them all in this backup, you can spend them differently or on one of the other ones. So I'm, I'm very yeah. interested to see how these perform. Yeah, these are cool. Like it, this is this is the kind of thing that like we we could have been having from like a long time ago, where like these small inherent packages that do like kind of wonky things that you know like we didn't really think that we wanted or like mm -hmm. like or even maybe think about it at all but it's like it's really cool to put like your bounty counters on like whatever and then you know take them off of your characters and and spread them around and draw cards and stuff that being said these cards are probably not standard playable <laughs> like yeah. in general they're uh they're a little too conditional and like if you like if you have Bagamon or whatever his name is uh, i think that's right, I think uh, that's right and yeah. he has like two counters yeah, and he has two counters on him. 
and you've already spent your way your your bounty counters or whatever and then they bounce it those counters are just gone forever yeah. and so like in a world of you know mastery and stern um you know chocobo's doga th this kind of thing is just a little too cute uh that being said um gizuk is really good having a finally having a tutor for these cards uh the tutor being able to get the backup or the forward is really huge uh, and so, like, I think this is more of like one of those L three kind of things where, like, uh, if you're playing in the in the newer format, these cards definitely have some of like the CP value and and power that it takes to be relevant. Uh, but there's just it's too much of an uphill battle in standard yeah. nowadays for for cards like these. That's fair. Speaking of an uphill battle, so we've got our new line of monsters. Uh, this is bomb. I have to admit, I adore this artwork. He looks like a little hot tamale. But, uh, and we'll just kind of talk about all these monsters in general right now, because they all have a, when they enter, do a element type effect, and then they all have the action ability that, they, for free, they can become a forward with 6,000 power. However, they then die at the end of that turn. You and I kind of talked about this when the first one got revealed. I think it was the Jumbo Flan. And I'm very sour on these, just because, again, uh, I mean, monsters have always struggled to fit in deck space. I do like the free action effect. I just... I, you know, you and I talked about this, like, what if they didn't die? What if that was just the way it was? And you said, well, that would be really strong because you can just freely turn this into a body. So if that was too strong, I would have rather seen something like they can only attack or they can only block. That way they're still one-sided because I just, yeah. like, because at this point, the most I can see use for them is, other than their entry effect, is that they're basically a chump blocker. You know, okay, well, they're going to die anyway, so I'll just turn them into a forward block, but... I don't know. I, I just don't like that effect. I mean, we're a little bit past this point, but I a lot of players played through like the the old Opus Four days of tricolor monsters with like uh, Chantoto and Veil Four, and then you just don't play forwards because you don't have to. Mm -hmm. You just play all the monsters. You just play six or seven of them. You completely ignore what your opponent's doing, and then you play a board clear, and then you just animate all the monsters with no no, and then kill them. Like that's just it's just like a thing that happened, and then it happened again in Opus. Uh, I want to say 10. Yeah, in Opus 10. Uh, when Citra was released, uh, it happened again, you know, what they did, there's a Citra Veil 4 deck in the WAF days uh, where you use the Flandids to control your opponent's stuff and uh, you just keep continue looping Citra and Veil 4 and your opponent never gets to hold onto a board, but you get to keep your board because all the monsters are there. And um, this is, I think, their hedge against that kind of thing just happening again. And uh, even even with this uh, restriction, it's very possible that because cards like Realm uh, Five Cost Realm from Opus yeah. Eleven exist, uh, like you can just play like a couple of these, uh, you know, get the Cobaldridian, get one of these, and if you Magic Pot the Realm or whatever it is, and the Realm goes off again, you just have like five attackers that can't be removed, and like that's the kind of thing that like people really really hate. And, yeah. and in my opinion, it's not really a big deal, but, you know, like, people really dislike that, like, I get to play Veil 4 and I get to play Shantoto and it only affects your cards, right? Yeah. And there's rules for the rules for the not for me kind of thing. And uh, this is this is the hedge against that, but it could still happen. So I think that these cards are way, way better than most people say they are. Now, that being said, you know, we're, we're living in a different age. It, it's standard is is not really kind to people who are trying to set up for anything. Yeah. So, um, so you know, maybe these cards, maybe they don't make the cut, but, you know, I would not be surprised that, you know, if some of them, at least, uh, saw play. Uh, maybe not, like, as honest, fair cards, but as, you know, uh, not so honest and not so fair cards uh, going forward with, you know, bounce effects and stuff like that. Uh, maybe OTKs in the future. Uh, the, the ones that really stick out to me are the Thunder Drake and the Blue Drake. Yeah. Uh, those coming in off of Realm. The, like, the Thunder Drake is just uh, pretty efficient as is, and so you just kind of get the the, the, the 0 CP 5k body that threatens lethal. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the Blue Drake is a great target to be bounced because you can just keep drawing cards with it, and uh, if you ever need it in a pinch, then you have it in a pinch. Yep. Well, I always like to see monsters succeed, so hopefully they have success. Now, this next card, man, we saw the art before we saw this text, and he looked really sad, and at first I thought, well, he's sad because he's holding Rem. No, he's sad because he saw his card text. <laughs> he's sad for a lot of reasons. We haven't had a he's Machina a reasons, since sure. Opus 3, so I was really excited yeah. about this because I like playing Cadets, 
And like, I don't know, man. I don't know if you're any higher. I just don't like this effect. Like, don't mean a cost reduction is always nice. Although again, this one's like dependent on what they're doing. But just the fact that his the whole because without his this text, he's just a vanilla. So to get his only text, which is brave, and when he attacks, he'll do 4K to the board, which is very similar to old Machina. He had this 4K ping effect. You can only control one other forward besides Machina, and cadets have always liked to go wide. Like, they always have cards that go cheaper, and then they flood the field with the cadets. Like, yep. I, I just don't get it. Like, would it really have been too strong if if he just had that effect? That That's his effect. He's brave, and when he attacks, he does 4K to the board. I don't think so. And and again, if, he were, if that was too strong... Instead of saying, well, he can only have one partner, restrict it to cadets. Say, if you control two cadets, now he gains this ability. Okay, so you have to play him in a cadets deck. Like, oh, I'm just so disappointed in this card. Yeah, I think they wanted it to be like this anti-aggro card, and they just don't know what they're doing. Because it's not going to do anything at this point, because... So, like, 4K isn't enough to actually do anything to the board, and I, I understand what they want. You know, they want... So, my opponent plays, you know... Well, uh, some chocobos or yeah. you know stern or whatever and then i play this and then i attack and then i combo it with a blaze or whatever and the reality is just that like as long as stern exists any amount of damage that you can prevent you can present to a board is just not enough unless it's like 20k or something yeah. <laughs> like like everything grows nothing matters so i don't think that this this card really has legs against aggro the way that they intended it to because uh, you still have to combo it with another removal piece. Whatever whatever AoE removal piece that is, you know, take your pick. Uh, Blaze is probably the, the most straightforward one. But, uh, yeah, there's like there's too many conditions on it. It does nothing when it... It has no enter the field ability. Uh, he gets Brave instead of Haste for some reason. Like, yeah. if he had Haste, then there would at least be something there, I think. You know, like, it could be playable. But he doesn't get Haste, so you have to wait a whole turn, and you're just like... If you have to wait a whole turn to do something in this game, you're just dead already. Yep. So, uh, I think this card is dead on arrival, but I would be happy to s be wrong about that. Like, it'd be awesome to see, like, a cadet actually do something in Mono Fire or, you know, whatever it is. But I just don't see it. If he so. did, like, 8k or 9k on swing, I could understand the restriction. Yeah, four. yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. Not, that's not even killing a so a yeah. Mobius. It's, it's not even, yeah, it's not even five. Well, that's... I'll tell you what. If you like waiting a turn for an effect, boy, do I have the card for you. Saban <sighs> is my favorite character in Final Fantasy VI. He always has been, and he just, uh, even though I liked the Opus Four Legend, like, he just, his, he just can't seem to get, like, a really great card, and this card is just why like i don't like at first when i read it and it's worded kind of weirdly i thought oh 9k every turn that's pretty strong it's this threat you gotta get rid of the singer it's gonna nuke something no <laughs> it's only 9k for the first turn and then it goes he it's it just it, not only is it worded weird so yeah you enter the field he has to live a whole turn then he gets a one-time 9k nuke like why why is my saban always gotta be Ugh, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just heartbroken take over yeah, it's uh, not really the Fire Earth Monk support we were looking for from our new Saiyan. Uh, it's pack filler, and I'm not even sure that you would play this in, like, you know, draft or title. Maybe it's okay in draft, actually. I I'm probably being a little negative, because uh, all removal is playable in draft. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this, is not, uh, this is not great. Also, it's worded so weird. Yeah, it's worded very weird. Like I said, I had to, my friend was like, "No, dude, it does it every turn." And I was like, "No, he loses it at the end of the turn." I was like, "No, it's just it was just we had to like argue about it because it's so strange." And now we have our little rebel support. This is your typical um, tribal searcher, three cost backup. That's an EX burst. It's gonna go grab your rebels. Uh, you know, straightforward. If you're gonna play rebels, you're probably gonna play this. It's gonna. It's obviously gonna go in all the rebels decks uh, because it's. It's got EX above everything. You probably play three of this because of that. Uh, the, the only other thing to mention about this is that it's a Fire Monk backup, and it's just yeah. totally unplayable with the Monk stuff. I have no idea why they decided to go for that, but yeah, they also made it a Monk and just to tease us, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got another Headhunter, Renok. I don't really have anything unique to say about him other than just, again, yeah. kind of with all the Headhunter packages, so we'll just go ahead and scoot past him. Uh, General Leo. Ugh. What a disappointment this card was. I know some folks were high. I mean, it has 
two negative <laughs> effects for you. For you, the person using the card. And it, players can't cast summons. O okay, that's kind of neat. Like, oh, Doga? Here comes General Leo. I shut off a bunch of what your deck does, right? Except Fire has one of the most relevant summons in the game in Amaterasu. Why would you stop yourself from using your own Amaterasus? And then you give Opus 2 Water Legend Cecil text to your whole board. Like... I like the art, but I just I just don't get it. And, and thematically, it doesn't even make sense. Like, General Leo didn't do anything like that in the game, so I just, I don't get this card at all. Some people are pretty high on it. I think it's just another black belt. You know, it's a 4 CP 8K. It, do, it has, it, again, like you said, two negative impacts on yourself and only one negative impact on your opponent. And even then, like, how upset is a Doga player when you say you can't cast summons against mm -hmm. them? Like they're not like are they like if they if they needed a to Sildra on turn one to get access to their Doga? Like sure, I see it. You know that's you can you can definitely like just say in some constructed games go in blind turn one General Leo, ha ha ha. You know gotcha. But like there's no like realistic competitive scenario where like you go first. You hard mulligan for this. You don't know what you're playing against, and then like you just happen to play it against Doga. It's yeah. like, okay, buddy, like you got me. If that's if that's what happens, but um, yeah, I think if this didn't have the bottom text, the forwards you must control must block if possible. Um, if it didn't have that text, and then they also made it like a two CP five K or two CP six K, mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh, you know, maybe we we're, maybe we're cooking with something here. Yeah. But it's just like it's too expensive. It's too bad. It's not. It doesn't hurt as much as you think it does, and it also hurts you more. So I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, we're, we're are the fires it. dying out on that one. So that's fire. Yeah. We're gonna move on to ice uh, with uh, Amadet Lion. I'm never sure how to pronounce this card, but this can be searched out via Norstalin's Crystal Chronicle backup. And we've seen a lot of effects like this before on other cards where they, they sap away First Strike or Haste. You know, I've seen a lot of Ice cards yeah. like that. To me, the only scenario I can think of where I would really use this again is like against the loop deck when they try to give everything Haste. And then what's nice is you don't have to dull it. You can just go, ha ha, I'll break it. But I mean, if they see it on the field, one, they're either not going to do it or they'll just wait, let you burn it and then do it again. So like, it's a cute idea. Yeah. I just don't see how realistically you'll ever use it. Yeah, I also thought, you know, like maybe use this against loop uh, if that's ever like a big problem. But the problem is uh, if you are playing against loop or if you're a loop and you give your whole board haze with a Lua and then they am an Italian, you can just do you can just do it again with a Lua. Yeah. So like you just give them haste again. So it doesn't actually even work against that. Uh, the only thing it has going for it is that it's a it's a North Shalin, I It's an ice target in North Shalin that you can break whenever you want. Yes. So just like ignore the break effect or the uh, uh, effects on the break, but you can just break it whenever you want. Maybe you play one of that nice win. Maybe you don't. Uh, hard to say. And I'm, I have basically set away from ice wind after last set because it's unplayable. Yeah. Uh, it would be it would be good again if like some other stuff left the meta and you were allowed to play that kind of a game, but it just hasn't been. So I don't know if you would actually slot this, but that's the only home I could possibly see it that's fair. going in. Well, let's talk about what I like to call potential the card, and that's, I believe, where I, or Weary from Final Fantasy XI. Man, it's, I got excited when I saw this effect, and I, I hope it's good. Could it bring discard back? I mean, potential, again, potential is there. I, I, you, in my dream scenario, you draw this turn one, you slam it down. Next turn, you follow up with your Scale Toad or your Edward. Me, it would be the Edward backup. So now, not only are you making them discard, you're getting value back. Like, so cool. How will that go in a practical game? I don't know, because are you going to have this turn one all the time? Eh, probably not. So, like, I, I, I'm hoping, Jared. I got my fingers crossed for this guy. What do you, how do you see him? <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess I'll take this time to just talk about discard in general. They gave us all of these awesome cards they say if you can make your opponent discard look at all of these things you can do they're all in the, the, the same vein as viceless you know where like uh if, if you can make your opponent discard you know viceless is busted right and if you can make your opponent discard so is uh, we're gonna talk about some other stuff but like you know lightning this cause is not coming up this where it these are all like fantastic cards and there's just like you just you can't make your opponent discard there's just like not enough good ones so uh i'm a little down on uh these cards just because there's no good discard effects like 
if they gave us back thaumaturge, I could see it. You know, like instantly, boom, I'm on, I'm on board. If, but without Gesper or thaumaturge, you know, you're kind of reduced to uh, Arigath, Kronos, these kind of like um, clunky, subpar named cards that you can't really play a huge volume of in the deck. So like the turns when the games and turns when you can just make your opponent discard every single turn and you're always getting value from these and you get you get them on time and you get the right mix of discard and discard payoff. Uh, that's when this stuff is going to look really good. But then you're also just going to get some games where you just like you only draw discard and then your opponent is just playing the game normally because all of their stuff is free. Yeah. And then you never get to draw cards off of this because you you had to play the discard ones before you got here and the, the deck never works. And yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to feel great when it lines up, but I, I, I could, yeah. the moment I read it, I was like, man, I'm going to be that player that this is the bottom three cards of my deck and I never see it. So, <laughs> so yeah, kind of going along with him. Another one of these discards effect is this new orphan, which when I first read it, I just completely dismissed it. But again, after seeing the where I, and just thinking about it in general, Again, I think there's potential here. It's on a burst. Uh, like, the first effect of just, um, this is the dulling, which is kind of like, eh. But then I started thinking about it. I was like, if this thing sticks around, every attack phase, it's it's basically a Glaciolabilis. They have to discard, and you get to dull a forward. And if you got that way right, now you're drawing off of it. Again, key word there, if it sticks around. It's just an 8K. It could be Amaterasu. Is it going to stick around? I don't know. But I, I do like it more the more I at least think about it. How do you feel about Orphan? Yeah, I think this this card line it's uh it checks a lot of boxes, right? So it's a verse tail target. Mm -hmm. Uh it comes in as a four CP two K uh, a four CP eight K off of Stern, and then it immediately gets a, a discard from your opponent. Mm -hmm. And then when it does, it dulls, so it also helps you attack. Yeah. Uh and then it also works with, you know, um like the the Viking deck and stuff like that. The Stern Leonis, aggro decks, it's just seems to be like an all-star, and then they also have to kill it or it starts continues to generate value every single turn so in that regard it's not quite as good but on par with ignacio but it also gets uh, in that ignacio draws you a card every turn so it's like a four cp uh card that is going to generate uh plus one plus two or minus two for your opponent every single turn uh but then this one works from from the first turn that it comes down so it's just yeah. better so i think that this card it actually like I also dismissed it like on my first glance. I was like, okay, Theater Rhythm, Final yeah. Fantasy 13 card, bye bye. You know, like it's, it's gone. But I think uh, the more th after having thought it through a little bit more and thinking about like where it fits in the meta, yeah, yeah, yeah this was this is kind of the underdog yeah. for me. So, Verse Stale, I think it's going to be really gross. Uh, you know, yeah. it's, you know, it's also gross, but for the opposite reasons is the Scholar backup. Uh, it's just like, yeah. I, I couldn't believe this was being printed Nopus 15. Like, I understand that maybe they think a backup that you can just dull and dull a forward every turn. Like maybe that's, eh, we don't really want to deal with that. Cause that basically takes away a blocker they have every turn. But again, but then you put this restriction on it where it just now, okay, well now it's just garbage. So yeah, uh, this is never seen play probably. Uh, in the, the only case that I can see for it is like, you know, you go into the L3, L6, your backups are pretty sparse. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure this is going to make the cut there, especially if you're playing like the new Terra and like this kind of, you know, that kind of deck. Yeah. Uh, when you're playing Ice Summon Focus deck, you know, this, you know, maybe you're going to play it in one of these limited formats. In uh, in standard, there's there's no way. Uh, I can never see that happen. So, so a backup you mentioned earlier. This is Kazuza. I have to admit, I'm not as high on this as some of my buddies are. Like, I get it. It is a you know, it's technically you're paying two CP and ICP and you're dulling them and you're breaking indiscriminately, which in the past ICE has struggled with, you know, like Zalira only targets prime forwards. It got to be dull. So I do appreciate the indiscriminate break on this. However, you got to lose a backup. You're still two CP and they have to discard. Like, I don't know. I, I hope he plays better than, I don't know. Like again, cause part of me is like, but it's indiscriminate break, which ICE really needed. But again, it's also still tied to this other effect. I just, I mean, you kind of touched on it earlier. Do you have anything to say about Kazuza? So so you do want the indiscriminate break, and it is very useful, and it's something that Ice has wanted for a long time. Uh, the things that it has going against it is that, well, you have to play discard, so it's got all the problems that I mentioned earlier. But also, if you want to play discard, you kind of want to play the old Kazuza, too. The mm -hmm. Opus uh, 2, 2, 3, 3, uh, 1, to make, uh, that makes both players discard. So it's like, well... I can't really play both, and th I, this one doesn't even work if I don't have the right critical mass of discard for the other ones, or for uh, uh, to make the ability activate, so I kind of want to play the other one instead. And 
Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if people are playing this. I would be surprised if it was incredibly effective in changing ice in any way. So, next we have the Emperor. Hobby Japan. How many times are you gonna try this? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I don't have I don't have much more to say about it. You know, like there's. Uh, I I think you know you can play the Emperor in title if you want, and uh, it it'll be great fun. Uh, this is like one of those cards that like the people who are happy to see it are gonna be incredibly happy to see it, and the rest of the people are just like, okay, push that one to the side and let's keep going. <laughs> yep. Uh, so a card that has gotten a lot of buzz. This is Gogo. -Go. I love this Amano artwork. And uh, so I, I don't honestly know how relevant his special is going to be because specials are rare in general. feels like that's going to line up. But still, his first ability to copy an action ability. First of all, I have a lot of questions about this and that and there's already been a lot of questions asked is like, how does it work exactly? Like if this copies the effect of a Gigas monster, which says it turns him into a forward 9k is does he copy that exactly i think they did already confirm on twitter that it won't copy costs so for example if you have opus yeah. 5 legend zemus where you dull him you pay a cost and you revive that forward gogo -Go doesn't actually see that he just sees it as zero but he does yeah. see something like Magisa. Gogo -Go doesn't actually have to have received 4,000 damage he can just summon a target like Magisa can so yeah. A very interesting card just because there's so many possibilities. The idea of copying a stern effect or a mastery effect is gross. Yep. I don't even want to think about that, but he's also an ice. So yeah, uh, Gogo -Go is just a very high ceiling on this guy. How do you see Gogo? -Go? It's a very, very difficult card to evaluate. Uh, some people are like, oh man, there's going to be some busted Gogo -Go combos to, you know, like, Activate Tilika twice or whatever, right? And yeah. Well, if you activated Tilika, you've already won the game. You're like, yeah. whatever. But uh, um, I, I think the more realistic use case for him is, you know, Stern reduces him to two. Then you can play So you can play him for two. And then you can use the Stern ability. And then he copies the Stern ability. It seems <laughs> very si seems very simple to me, right? It's like you you just get another Stern ability by, by playing him. So, you know, maybe in uh, an Ice Stern deck... Uh, I don't imagine I'll make the cut in Verstale because, you know, obvious reasons. But uh, in Vikings, the the Vice Kings uh, Stern deck uh, seems like a shoe in. Um, that being said, I'm not really sold on like you know doing a lot of the other cute combos that uh, people are talking about. You know, like with X-ray to like draw an extra two cards with with Gogo -Go or whatever. That seems a little too cute for me. I'll believe it when I see it. Um, but you know, Stern has proven to be pretty good and he does copy Stern's ability. So I think yeah. uh, that's probably where we're going to be uh, looking for this card. I hope I don't come to hate this card and there's, there's a good chance I might. <laughs> so uh, next we have yeah. Shiva, man. I adore this artwork. Gosh, she just, she just looks her, her facial expression is just beautiful props to the artist. Like she looks very, it's like alluring and enticing, but also kind of mysterious and dangerous. Uh, but how's the card itself? Yeah, dangerous. Um, at its worst, at its absolute worst, you know, this has a very low floor, a very high ceiling. At its absolute worst, it's 1 CP, dull, dull forward. At its absolute best, you're dull freezing two forwards, and they're discarding two cards for 1 CP, which is obviously bonkers. But to do that, you have to load your deck up with a bunch of Shivas. And we've had other Shivas in the past. The Opus 10 Amano one, I think there was the Opus 4 one that got higher for more Shiva, like... None of those have ever really been a thing. So, like, I mean, I kind of want to try it. I, I don't think that's going to ultimately be reliable. And unfortunately, I do think she's just too low that without the other Shivas, I don't think she's worth playing. But, man, do I, do I want to make it work? Erase Miss Dragon from the game. Just pretend it never existed. I'm on board. You know, yeah. I'm totally on board. You know, like, fine. You finally gave us a payoff to play 25 Shivas or whatever yeah. <laughs> But... The fact that you can Miss Dragon on so like when, after this card has been cast, you can Miss Dragon on the stack, and then it won't see the Shivas there, and then it just totally fizzles and it does nothing. I can't, I can't play it in, in a format, you know, like an L six, L six Miss Dragon is rotating. You know, maybe there's something there with this, but you're still gonna have to, you know, fight an uphill battle against Doga. But um, you know, maybe there's something there in that format without Miss Dragon, where you can reliably get to the number of Shivas that you need. Uh, I am very, very interested. I think the new Terra, we'll, we'll talk about her in a little bit. I think the new Terra is great. Uh, and I think, you know, Shiva is one of the cards that, you know, makes a lot of sense to use the new Terra with because you need to keep a volume of summons and cast a lot of summons to keep getting value from her ability. 
as long as Mr. Agnew exists, and as long as yeah. like uh, we're not getting you know like ten turns to play the game, even uh, it seems like an uphill battle, and I'm I'm not really sure that this is uh, the time for this kind of card to shine. That being said, if you know, we get like if you get like a one if you give me like a one CP Shiva that just says your opponent discards a card, that would go like a long way in making this kind of thing more yeah. playable. You know, awesome. Well, yeah, I, I, I feel I, I heard in your voice there that you just couldn't get enough Shiva, so I'm going to go ahead and give you another one. This is our 3 CP yeah. Shiva. And, uh, you know, kind of your standard ice effects. Well, maybe not standard, 9K to a doll forward, and then the other one is 3K to the whole board. That's pretty neat. So uh, really the main question I have for you is that do you are, are you okay playing this at 3, or is this like you really want to reduce it to make it worth it? Because I don't know. I, I, this one doesn't, like, really be like, wow, that's incredible. Ice doesn't have the greatest payoffs for crystal generator for uh, for crystals right now. It's literally just snow and this card basically. So in ter- in that regard, you know, like using your crystals here probably doesn't feel that bad. You know, getting it to one. Uh, that being said, it it costs three already. So if you have a way to reduce it, like Mashri, uh, then you know making it two probably is where you feel that sweet spot. Uh, nine gate or dual forward is you know like. This is a standard Shiva procedure nowadays. You know, like it has to be dull for, for you to do anything. Uh, maybe Terra makes that a little bit easier since you can kind of, you know, dull stuff and then leave it frozen. And then on the next turn, it'll already be dull for the Shiva to, to deal with. Uh, and, you know, the ice, the 3k and a pinch is, is fine. In terms of like junk filler Shivas to make other Shiva work or like just ice summons in general are basically all garbage. So, uh, in, in that regard, I think this is a very clear winner. Am I excited to play this the way that I'm excited to play, like, Miss Dragon and Amaterasu? Probably not. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's fair. All right, moving on. We finally get another Sid Reigns. The only thi- I only have two comments for this card. One, I love his facial expression. He's like, hey, I'm Sid Reigns. How about me? And two, the only reason I would even consider this card is because of the word randomly. It's still a black belt and it's got to die to do anything. So I think this is more of like a cube card or a draft card uh, than uh, a constructed card. Uh, but yeah, I do agree. He looks great and he's also a 13 card. So I'm going to get three foil of this for sure. That wraps up in my thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> J- Jumbo <laughs> Flan. We kind of mentioned the monsters earlier. Yeah. Need artwork. Uh, Snow, a card that at first I was just like, eh, another snow body, whatever. But then rereading his effect. He's got a pretty strong effect, freezing all of your opponent's backups or forwards. Any of those big white board freezes in Shiva, Lady of Frost, or Ultimecia have proven to be very good, especially freezing someone's backups. You obviously have to have a crystal for it, so I I, I like Snow the more I think about him. Yeah, so there was a version of this card in Chapters. It was the it was Aldo, the, like the lightning backup that we have now. It was just a, a 4CP Ice 8K that said, when it enters, freeze all the forwards or freeze all the backups. And it was like the most busted ice card that ice ever had in chapters and it like never went away from ice it was just always good they kind of gated it this time around by putting it behind a crystal uh and i think that has made it a lot more tame that being said uh this is like one of the best ways to use crystals i think right now like it's maybe not the best way but it's one of the best ways and definitely the best way to use your crystals in ice uh so assuming you're playing a crystal deck uh, a deck that can generate crystals uh, and use crystals outside just the snow, then it, it's probably going to be worth playing at least, you know, two or maybe even three of this card. Uh, it's got a lot of support, and you can search it in three different colors. You can search it, with it from Amadar and Earth, uh, from Lumina and Lightning, and from uh, its own color, Ice, with Mach 13. So, yeah, definitely a uh, a card worth playing, I think. I think it's severely underrated by a, a good population of the community right now. Well, if you like crystals, we got more crystals for you. We got our yeah. gambler, Setzer, who always one of my favorite Final Fantasy VI characters. They always seem to try to put a lot of element of luck, or at least they did in his Opus 11 version. Uh, yeah. you know, here's one of your crystal generators. Playing a character for yeah. free is never anything to sneeze at because there's no restriction on that. Any like If you play some massive card. However, I also have the kind of luck that I'll reveal a character I already have on the field and then nothing will happen yeah and then obviously as if he sticks around and he sees other stuff go around go to the break zone he's just gonna start generating crystals for you so like he's a cool card in a six theme deck i don't know it's still hard to see something replace either the backup sets or or even the opus four forward one like but again like you said if you're going in on crystals i think you're definitely trying sets yeah i've played a little bit with this card already uh 
it's just good. Like just generically good. Like if you just hit like a two CP backup, that's just good, right? Like that's just that's that's just very solid. So uh, I I think that this card is it's a less straightforward but more generically good way to play crystals uh, right now. Uh, it's also an incredible combo card because you can yeah. use the Leviathan. So just like Rosa uh, from last set, you can use the Leviathan three to draw three uh, draw two cards and then put whatever you want on the top and then sets her immediately just gets that out and that's just a two card combo that always works when you have a crystal yeah so um i've made a deck that like plays like sephiroth seven and leviathan nine and then you just oh, stack God. the leviathan or whatever on top and then because you can do it whenever you want right so like i have the yuna and then once i have the crystal i just you know okay well I'll draw two put leviathan on top and then sets her get the leviathan out it's very straightforward uh, you don't have to cast like a bunch of times like you did with Rosa, uh, and you can kind of like prepare it ahead of time. Setzer has several ways to be searched as well, uh, and and so I, I think that that kind of thing has a lot going for it. I'm not sure like the best way to play this card because I think you know if you can just play like a bunch of high value backups or uh forwards so like if you play like a versatile deck for example mm -hmm. this seems like a very just good card to just generically fire off whenever you can because you're generally going to get a pretty high value target for for one crystal right yeah uh but i think it's also got that you know like you can do the leviathan and like play summons with it and 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 do all of this cute stuff with it too and i also think you know it's probably just generically good in the six deck too so i yeah. think that this is like a huge winner uh, is it going to be like, you know, a set changer or whatever? It maybe, maybe not quite that much, uh, but it also generates crystals by itself. And yeah, I, I think this card is just great. I appreciate the self-contained nature with those crystals. And I love this artwork. Uh, he just looks so awesome. Leaning back. Yeah, he looks great. Well, hey, let's not stop the six fun. Let's go to Celis, who's very six focused. She helps us get out of lock when she enters. And then anytime, again, she's another one of these, the longer she sticks around, your six characters start partying. I, I don't remember seeing any six characters that like specifically wanted to party, but again, if you're willing to do that, the fact that you can pull any of them back from your break zone is really neat. So Opus 4 Legend Celis definitely fell out of favor, and the Opus 8 one was always just kind of like fine, but it's it's nice to see an updated version of her. But this card is just like full of good text, basically. Mm -hmm. All of the modes are good. Like you can get a lock when you need to get a lock. You can get, so it works in Ice Wind to get lock eight as another way to yeah. search lock eight. It works in, you know, the Ice Water or Ice Fire decks to search, you know, uh, Opus 4 lock, presumably. Or, I guess if you want to play the new one, the new one as well. Uh, and then, you know, when you don't want to search the lock, you don't have to play, like, five locks or whatever. Yeah. But when you don't want to search the lock, you just make them discard. You know, that's perfectly fine, too. And then, you're right, uh, as she sticks around, she gets more uh, value via the party stuff. I've kind of, I've played some games with it, and you kind of need to play, like, the mid-range game to, to really get value out of that. You got to take it slow, you got to play some backups, and then you, like, search, and you, you get to party uh, at that point. Um, I would be interested in seeing how, like, maybe, like, a Vikings deck that, like, already parties, you know, like, with Jack and you and stuff can maybe make use of the party uh, a little bit quicker, a little faster, because... I think in the mid range, you're actually not going to get quite as much uh, out of that as as I expected when I first read the card. Yeah. But it's still quite playable. That's fair. Yeah, I, I do really appreciate her versatility. That oh, I already drew all my locks. No big deal. Just go ahead and discard one instead. It's really yeah. Nice. All right. Well, you know what? Six is such a great game, and Raven's such fun with their characters. Let's do another one. We've got our Ice Legend here. It is Lady Terra. And a lot of people were kind of down on this card when they saw it. It's got some gorgeous artwork. But again, people always say, hey, Ice has really bad summons. I did a video on Ice recently talking about the summons. Check that out on the channel. I don't know. It's kind of hard to evaluate her. Like, because her effects, there, there's a lot of potency there. Absolutely. It's just... How many ice summons are you running for this? I don't know. For, for, I've personally always struggled with these kind of cards where you have to like reveal a certain thing from your hand because again, I just struggle to to see it at the right times. That oh, I'll have the Terra, but I don't even have any ice summons, or I'll see all the ice summons early, and I had to pitch them for the Terra. So I'm kind of eh, on her, but I would I would love to be wrong and see that she really performs well. This is definitely like the build around mm -hmm. card for ice. I said like there's nothing quite as. Low, or low floor and high ceiling as this card is like if you just sort of like play this card in a deck that has you know like eight summons or whatever she's never going to do anything she's going to be totally useless you're never going to get any value out of her and if you build a deck around like you know 
having like 15 to 20 to 25 summons like she's gonna be insane right because like when you whenever you draw her she's always she's gonna freeze your opponent's entire board uh every time you cast a summon you're gonna freeze and and, and get in damage and, and race and uh yeah i think this card is just really really strong but really really difficult to uh make use of it it, it seems very obvious that you want to play tarot with like mosh because you need a volume of summons and then you get to use the summons from your break zone to do stuff uh, and the problem is, I'm just not, like, seeing what kind of engine we're supposed to use to make that happen. I'm not sure if we're supposed to do, like, Odin's with Lightning and, and Terra, or if you're supposed to do Shiva, because the, the, both the Shiva and the Odin's, they, they kind of want the Odin's and the Shiva's to stay in break zone for the other Odin's and Shiva's to get cheaper or have more effects. And, like, that just doesn't really play well with how you want to make use of the summons in your break zone already. So it doesn't play very well with, play very well with Moshery doesn't play very well with the lightning either and so like it kind of just doesn't make sense the way that doga makes sense where it's like once the summons are in the break zone mashri can't eat them it just yeah. doesn't even matter anymore and i think if we get to that point with uh, a terra ice summon deck somebody can make that work then this card is going to really shine there and that that deck could be really really strong but like i'm not i'm i'm not seeing how we're supposed to get there quite yet yeah that's fair well, we got a couple clunkers coming up. Uh, here's the knight. He's the ice version of the crystal backup generator. We'll go past him. Uh, here's Mime. He's just a cute little card for, you know, uh, limited. Nothing really you'd ever play. And, yeah, he's a cute little card. Yeah. And then we have uh, <laughs> Larzos. I, I don't think you'd ever play this, but he also is, again, one of the only ice cards that technically generates a crystal, but it's when he leaves. So maybe similar to the shadow, like that's just very slow. This card is unplayable, basically. It, it's a little bit better than the shadow, I think, because it's when it leaves the field. So, you know, there's like some potential that in some future when we need to generate infinite crystals, mm -hmm. we can keep bouncing this back to our hand and keep getting more and more and more crystals. But that's like a long ways away. And by the time we get there, we probably have a better way to do it than this. So, Rel like, uh, just skipping forward a little bit, Realm is probably already better at doing that than this card is. Yeah. So. Well, let's I don't move. See this kind of yeah. Let's move on to our second uh, ice light. I almost said my I ice lightning, but it's lightning and ice. She's the ice legend. Yeah, wow, a hobby Japan. I didn't know you had it in you. I thought she would just be lightning forever. This card yeah. was like I had like stages of reading this. I was like, oh okay, hey, hey, huh? <laughs> oh, it's and ultimately like, so it wants you to play into it. it, it my only issue with this card is that last line of text that, you know, okay, they want to make da dealing damage passively hard again for some reason. Okay, cool. Except Sophie still exists. I just don't understand why she, why you have to hurt yourself for her to get that effect. Keeping their hand down. Okay, again, it, it gives you a goal. That would probably be pretty impressive. Like, not only do you have no hand, now she's getting you every turn and she's running in and hitting you. But, like, the fact that you also have to discard your own hand to get there... I don't know. That part I don't really care for. Beyond that, she obviously gets more expensive the more cards they have in hand. I'd be curious to know what your thoughts are that, like, you don't really ever want to pay her f or play her for more than this cost. You know, is it three? Is it four? Is it whatever it is? Um, so, yeah, like, she's... Again, it, it, it's another one of these things they tried to do something different with discard, so I do appreciate that, but man, it really bothers me that that last effect, like, I don't want to discard my hand, I want to make their hand go down. I don't know, am I underrating this? What do you think? I also went through stages reading this card where I was like, man, this card's busted, and then like, I was like, as I kept reading it, I was like, oh, but that doesn't work. Oh, and then this doesn't work, and then like, I also have to do this, and I was like, oh, maybe this card isn't busted, but uh, I think the card has a lot going for it. Uh, I think the cost increase is maybe not quite as problematic as some people think i think a lot of the times you will especially when you're playing ice and if you're playing any discard effects at all uh just the way the game is played now your opponent kind of has to cut their like discard their own hand in order to keep up with whatever pressure you're putting on and so like uh you're probably going to be able to play this naturally at cost for you know uh, between one and three a good chunk of the time is maybe where i would be uh happy with this uh, that being said, the printed cost is one, which really changes the for the like the, the the way that we should look at this because um, uh, you can bring it off of the old snow, the one where you pay X and yeah. then get a lightning. So you can you can just pay one and then get that off the old snow. So in in total, you pay uh, five 
and then uh, in chunks of four and one, and then you get a 7k and a 10k haste, basically, if you think about it that way. And you can do that as early as turn one. You can just uh, overpay the six, and that's very stat efficient. Uh, definitely worth going for. Um, and it, it's it's easy enough to get the plus 1k in haste that I just yeah. consider it to always be online, basically. Um, the bottom tax is like, well, I don't think this is ever going to happen, right? <laughs> like, uh, it's just this is not how the game is kind of played nowadays. Uh, I kind of want to think about this as Sophie fixed. Like, this is how we how Sophie should have worked, probably. But instead, like, Sophie just has like all of this. Wait, but then, but I like when I deal damage to my opponent, my I don't draw a card. Yeah. Like, why, why? <laughs> that's like. It's like, it's a, when you have, like, when you're playing with really busted stuff, it kind of, like, warps your perception yeah. of how the game works. And it's like, well, it's like, yeah, I I have to go to zero cards in hand, but I get to deal damage to my opponent. But, like, Sophie and, like, Chocobos is like, Chocobos is like, when I play a backup, my hand doesn't increase, you like, know? Like, <laughs> that, that's like, the, that's kind of like how it makes you think about the game kind of changes. So I think this is, this lightning is like, how it should be yeah. right you you there's a, a cost and in exchange it's 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 good you get to deal damage to your opponent or whatever you have to put cp into making your opponent discard cards and then you get to do this thing uh whereas like sophie is like how it should not have been done whereas yeah. like you get to draw a card and to deal damage to your opponent and it's, it's always good right uh <laughs> So I, yeah, I think that this card is good. It's it's not as good as Sophie. It's not as good as like some of the other stuff that's happening right now. But it is just a a very solid, good, and a, a little less uh, potent than than some of these other ones. Great comparison. I loved it. Okay, hey, let's go back to more six characters. Those were those are really good, right? Sure. So lot. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't. Know. It does what it does. I guess the thing is, Locke has so many cards. Are you ever playing this over any of the other locks? Opus 4 lock, Opus uh, 12 lock, obviously. There was even that light lock, but nobody used that one. Like, did, Are you ever going to use this one over the others? I'm not really sold on like how competitive it will be quite yet, but I think uh, if you can get, like, if this comes in at, at four costs, and then if you get one to two triggers of this off, mm -hmm. Then he's actually pretty good, and so if you just have the the right density of six cards, and you play uh, the cheaper six stuff, so like Gao is gonna get you the crystal, yeah. and then uh, Mog six gets you, uh, you spends the crystal to become a zero CP five K, and like if those cards are in addition to generating that kind of value, like flipping cards over and getting you extra cards in hand, this is actually possibly pretty decent. Uh, that being said, he doesn't trigger when he comes in, which means like you have to play him and then also play other stuff and then yeah. also hit. So he's it's a it's a real big uphill battle, but uh, it could be playable and it definitely could be good enough to see play in you know uh, uh, like an L three and L six kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, even if it doesn't see play here in, in standard. Uh, that being said, the the it does have the potential payoff if everything lines up correctly to be worth playing in standard as well. Uh, it's just a, a bit of an uphill battle there. Yeah, he's yeah. got to stay on the board and stuff. Yeah, he might be locked out. Hey, all right, well, yeah. we're done with ice, so let's move on to wind. So our first one we're dealing with is Vaughn, which is one of our wind legends, which is was one of the most disappointing cards revealed simply because I, I'm just keep it succinct. Like I actually think his effects are fine, particularly that unblockable is kind of scary, but we just got a Vaughn legend and he was seemed to be exactly what sky pirates wanted. So I don't know. This was, it was just like, Oh, another Va one set later, another legend Vaughn geared towards sky pirates. I don't know. I don't really get that decision. The back to back legend Vaughn sky pirate support cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much does Hobby Japan dev team love Sky Pirates to get to, you know, to give them this kind of support? Uh, I think that part of the one of the themes, uh, the undertoned themes to this set was they want us to play multiple cards in the same deck with the same name. Mm -hmm. So like we can see that with with Vaughn here. Uh, I think they want you to play both. And it, it's very mm -hmm. simple in that way. I, I think they want you to play both Nyx in the Kingslave deck. Uh, I, I think there's, you know, some some other stuff like that as well. Like they may be, uh, oh god, what was it? Maybe they you know, they want you to play multiple Furion, or multiple, uh, yeah, Cyan, multiple Porums. Uh, 
uh, in the same deck. And so um, it's kind of something that, that we've never seen pushed for before. And so we kind of like tend to dismiss these kinds of cards on face. But uh, for like, like I said, for Cyan earlier, it's like they're both must kill. So it seems pretty natural that um, that the name clash won't be a problem uh, the, for this Vaughn. Uh, the name clash could be a problem in that uh, you don't actually want to kill the six drop one because, yeah. you know, like, first of all, you don't want to target it in the first place. But uh, Sky Pirates is really, really good at bouncing their own stuff, right? Like you have the Mune, you can use Kites uh, to remove it and then bring it back and, you know, do fancy stuff like that. You have Althea, uh, you have Chocobo and stuff like that. So I think switching between the two van the, the, the two Vans is not going to be a big problem. And I think this is just like, the one you go to when you need a finisher. So uh, I've played a few games with Sky Pirates. Uh, when you get to play your rackups and do the thing, like over the first two turns, like a gentleman, the deck is really, really awesome. And this Vaughn is really great at helping close out boards. Uh, I would recommend playing three of the, the other Vaughn because it's, just, it's so good, it's so necessary to get set up. And then uh, trying two of this Vaughn out. And uh, I think that'll serve you pretty well if you wanna, if you're struggling to, to, to see how uh, this is good. That's an interesting insight into that kind of design philosophy, especially because none of these cards have specials on them, which in the past was like yep. the payoff of playing multiple named cards. So I'm curious to see how that works. You're definitely higher on it than I, I was. Well, well said, sir. So speaking of like same name cards, here's Edge. I don't know if you're going to cram this into ninjas because his effect is pretty independent. Gorgeous artwork here. I, I, I'm not sure what to think of this card. I could see it going in one of two ways. I could see it being like, eh, it just doesn't really do what you think it will do. But I can also see this being really obnoxious and a way to like just completely protect any of your other obnoxious win cards to kill. So like I'm hoping it's the former because I don't know if my heart can take any more obnoxious win cards to kill. But I wouldn't be surprised. It's just like oh my god, this edge is just charlatan and just eating up every ability. Yeah, I uh, I think unfortunately it's the latter. I'm pretty sure that this is like. They, this is the, uh, yeah, I think Edge is completely loved by the, the dev team as well. I said this for Vaughn, yeah. but uh, every time we get a new Edge, we got the back attack Edge. Looks awesome, you know, from Lord of a Million. We get, the, we get the other Edge. They made it a promo. They made it super overpowered for ninjas to make a whole deck based around him. And now they give us this one where it's like, okay, they weren't playing Edge in Mono Wind, so we got to make them play <laughs> Edge in Mono Wind, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think this card is it's bonkers, right? Uh, it's just it, it's it's great. Uh, you have you know Typhon, Bismarck, Rosa, and uh, you know like Zidane and like this. Or I, I guess last set it's really just those three, and then maybe Garuda, mm -hmm. and and these cards completely like push mana like the wind package, as as it is often called in the community, where like whether you're playing mono wind or wind water or earth wind or whatever it is like those cards they just go in they're just good mm -hmm. they give you so much value they're they're amazing right and i think this is just like well how about we give you the win package but then we also make it harder to kill and you have we you, you can now tax your opponent by making them target edge twice to, to ever do anything They've just made it completely uninteractable with this card. Like, as if it wasn't bad enough with, like, Chocobo and Althea. Now you've, you put Edge in the mix, you, like, literally can never touch your opponent. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, as long as Aggro isn't keeping the win package in check, this is, like, th that is going to be the de facto, just, like, nothing else can even see play if, if Aggro isn't killing wins. So, uh, yeah, that this is the, the new tax for that package, I'm pretty sure. I was afraid you'd say all that, but gotta be honest. <laughs> well, uh, man, so this just makes me want to get up and dance. Here's one of our new dancer tribals. You know, I actually made a dancer <laughs> deck in Opus 12 based off that dancer that if you had enough win characters that you could just like dull it and do 4K to the board. So I definitely yeah. want to try this. And I think it's kind of got some cute little synergy with that. And we've seen some new dancers. I don't know how much the tribal is going to work as a whole, especially because it's spread out amongst different colors. But, you know, I think this is a fine card to put into it, especially the, the, the idea of that threat of, like, like a dull that dancer, hit him for however much damage. At the end of the turn, now they're going to take this damage. Like, that potential of board wipe playing that deck was like, eh, it's, you know, you know, I don't know how it's ever going to stand competitively, but it, it was something you couldn't underestimate. This card individually is not awful. It works uh, well with the Lilith set, which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, but it's also, you know, a common standard unit mm -hmm. forward. And, you know, I, I don't have super high hopes for it. That's right. Maybe playable in like an L3, L6 kind of thing. Yeah. 
Well, let's get back to more Sky Pirates then. Next, we've got Kites. Uh, some people really like this artwork. I have to admit, I'm not personally a fan of it. I'm just It's just not for me. But the effect is obviously good. I wonder... Is, you know, again, is this? Do you just run both kites? Do you just really go in on all sky pirates and then you use whichever one is good for the situation? This one's obviously a one shot. He's gonna disappear after you use him. So then maybe you have the other kites in the break zone to bring back. I don't know. There's a lot of lines you can do in sky pirates. Yeah. So I'm curious to see what folks can do. You definitely want to snipe whatever his target is on the stack because you don't want it coming back reviving. Lord knows what else after that. So this card is totally busted. I've, I've played it like I've played a few games with Sky Pirates, and every time the deck is doing busted stuff, it's because of this guy. So like, uh, you just you you play the Vaughn, and then Kai says, "Okay, but do it again." <laughs> like it's just it's just another one, and then take it, and then you have to think about it this way. So like, you you can aggressively kite your own Vaughn to, you know, get a Pinello and reactivate. So in that case, Kites is, says one CP, but it also says activate all of your backups and play a Sky Pirate from the deck. And so it's like, huh, maybe this is a little bit busted. Uh, but then you can also use it reactively, just like Chocobo or like uh, whatever that is. So you can also just like stick it on the board and say, okay, you, you can never touch my Vaughn, right? You can never touch any of my Sky Pirates because I can just remove it on the stack and, and it's uh, insanely CP efficient. So in terms of like uh, which kites to play, uh, you definitely play three of these kites. You might also play some amount of the old kites. I uh, I would say maybe like one to two at max. Uh, probably probably one if you play any. But uh, this guy is just absolutely busted, and uh, I think he will, unfortunately for you, if you're not a fan of the art, be fetching a a high price as a foil yeah. <laughs> and a full air going forward. You know, as you were saying that, I reread the ability, and uh, I don't know why I'm surprised by this at this point because it's wind. For some reason, I thought this was like restricted to your turn. No, you can do this on their turn. So no, you, you can, should just do it. Whenever. You can block yeah. like with kites, stop an attack, and then use as a factor block your other forward. And so yeah, Ugh. yeah. It's uh, yeah. This card is is. I, I thought it was gonna be like. Okay, maybe this is good kind of thing, and then I like, play with it, and I was like, "This card is broken. <laughs> it is so fast. I've never gone from like zero to sixty on on a card." Yeah, ridiculous. Well, more win yeah. love. Uh, we have a legend Kane. Actually, I think this is Kane's first legend, if I'm not mistaken. And this version's in Great. wind. He's a dragoon. We got a couple wind dragoons this set. I don't know if you would play wind dragoons in the lightning set because it's already so set up with lightning water. But anyway, this Kane's got a nice burst. Uh, of course, it's a win card, so it gets like the best advantage of a crystal in that as long as you control a kiss crystal, you don't get the downside. And then anytime he's attacking, you're either drawing a card or you're going to reactivate every other character you control. To this point, there is nothing that steals crystals away from your opponents. So as long as you have a crystal, this Kane is always going to do exactly what you want it to. I have a, I have like a, a conspiracy theory about Ooh, this Kane. Ooh, tell, yeah. Yeah, I think that this cane was originally a hero, and they designed all of its text to be a hero. But then they're like, oh, but we made all of the other four cards with a mono art legends. So we'll just swap the edge and the cane. I think edge was originally the legend, and they just, just swapped the rarities at the last second because they wanted to keep the Amano stuff at the, at the legend rarity. That's funny. That's my conspiracy theory for this card. Uh, but yeah, it's got like a hero text kind of thing. Like, I wouldn't expect this to be something so simple to be part of a a legend uh it's got a nice ex burst you know always draw a card whenever you want activate characters whenever you want like very very flexible uh i think this is really really solid for wind and it's probably the the single biggest reason that you would want to generate crystals at all in wind yeah. uh that being said there aren't a bunch of good ways to generate crystals in wind you have Re yeah. uh rem and uh uh the dragoon backup but neither of those you're like super happy about slotting a bunch of them into your deck. Uh, so it might be a little difficult to play this card in mono color, like a, like a mono win right now, which mm -hmm. is probably something that would gladly take this kind of uh, thing. So uh, in terms of Dragoons, uh, it is obviously awesome to give this guy haste with, uh, what, what's her face? Barbara. Bar Barbara? Yeah, yeah you, you want, yeah. Giving this guy haste with, with Barbara is awesome. And then you gotta ask yourself, like, okay, so I'm gonna play the new Dragoon backup and Kane, and what other winning cards am I playing again? And there's like nothing. So uh, I Godspeed to the person who figures out how to make that 
uh, something that I'm scared of, uh, because I think if you can if you can jam the cane and the dragoon to the, into the regular dragoon deck, that's awesome. And I just do not see how to do it. So <laughs> next we have a card that I completely just by the art alone I thought oh it's a monster and I legit read it as a monster <laughs> and then later I was like oh this is actually a summon I, I didn't realize this is the win version of the crystal reduction summons. Uh, this is Gar Chimera. How do you feel about Gar Chimera? Would we play this card if it didn't have the crystal restriction? Like if you just didn't have to pay the crystal to make it one, would we just play a one CP card with that does this? I, I think the answer is. I think the answer is no, actually. Really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you would, then then maybe this card is playable. But at three, I think it's definitely not playable. Mm. Uh, if you ever like, if we get to a point in mono win where like crystals are free and we're like we're swimming in crystals, you know, then I could see an argument for this. But I think at three, you basically never want to play this card because the only cards that you're going to be breaking with the bottom hat with the bottom part of the text doga and then you paid three to kill their zero drop which is not great and uh if for the one drop uh if the one if the uh two drop or less is not bounced or the, the it fizzles you're not going to draw a card so it's never going to be like g great against mashri it's never going to be great against sophie or sarah Mobius. and so like what's the point even like if it yeah. broke it i could i could see it maybe but if it's not even going to be good against the only two drops that are like great in the mm -hmm. game like why would you even play this card so, folks that's i think why, at that point like diablos is better yeah well i'll say that's why it's important to read your cards because i i misread that bottom text i thought it said five or less it says five or higher that's totally different so <laughs> yeah. yep yeah agreed all right <laughs> uh next we have gigantar cool little card but again it's the cycle of monsters we passed him yeah i think just uh, ahead, one quick thought about this one. Uh, if your opponent plays turn one Doga and they don't have another three summons to the pop, then you can turn one Gigantar and kill it, which it automatically makes it better than most of the other ones in the set. So uh, there's a, a small niche for this to see play in, in L6 or whatever to counter Doga. But, uh, you know, once the Doga goes to 9k, it's already not enough. So I think this was like 1k short of being like actually potentially playable. The, the wind monster is the most playable out of all of them. Oh, Where yeah. Who could have seen before? that? <laughs> Having Typhon flashbacks. A good point. Mm -hmm. I, I like that Doga point. Uh, next, we got a Shikari again, which is what I wasn't expecting. A Shikari G. Uh, definitely the most disappointing of the other Shik Shikaris because the other ones are so yeah. cheap. Uh, but it does still get all of their effects. It'll give you your backups back. It'll give you your... And, you know, you can still part... Although it doesn't do the triple attack, I don't think. I can't remember how X is worded, but I thought X specifically had to partner with Y and Z. Yeah, it has to do with card name Shikri Y and Z. Gotcha. Okay, so yeah. So, it, I mean, it, it kind of fits into it, but not really. Like, I don't know. Would you even play this in a Shikri deck? Like, are you, are you fine with just the first three? <sighs> well, we play Barts, the three drop Barts that literally does nothing but get the Sin Hunter text uh, job to, to do the other ones. But we also, a lot of the times in Shikri, have wanted to play the Bart's backup. So, you know, like, there's a there's a chance that, like, okay, we can drop the Bart's, the three drop Bart's, play the backup one, and then put this in instead of the, the, the other Bart's. Uh, that being said, like, do I think this is going to change Shikri's at all? No, not really. It's yeah. really not going to change, like, any of the matchups. Uh, it'll probably be, like, a one-of in that deck just because it has the Sin Hunter job and it, it's uh, another combo piece. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be particularly impactful in changing how Shikaris operate. Will this next one be impactful? <laughs> it's Chocobo time. Oh, I'm so happy to see a Chocobo again. Uh, this is just a backup. Even in the original Chocobo decks, which were all about parties, I don't know if you'd really ever use the effect, but it's just, it's a card named Chocobo, which means it's, it's another card we can pull off a of fat Chocobo, which if you wanted to max out on that deck... I think that this puts it up to like 39 targets or like 40 targets or something absurd. Granted, that deck's already really jam-packed, you know, when you're trying to fit in Bismarck and Stern. So I don't know if you're taking them out for this other backup, but maybe you are. Is this going in the old Chocobo, the old Burbs rush? Oh, yeah, it is. Unfortunate, uh, unfortunately, and as much as it pains me, like another backup Chocobo, the, the first thing that I saw when I opened this, I was like, Hobby Japan, are you insane? What do you think you're doing? Like, you can't do this to me. Like, you can't continue to print more Chocobos. Uh, but yeah, th this deck, is, this is definitely going in. 
you would always max out on the number of backup chocobos because that deck actually benefits because yeah, when you play does. your backups effectively uh your hand it, like when you play a fat chocobo immune your hand increases rather than decreases mm -hmm. right so uh, being able to play things to the board that generate value over time that are not forwards is really important for the deck so i i immediately assume that this will be going to uh to three in the chocobo deck uh, it'll hurt the total amount of cards that you have for Stern, uh, but it's well worth that. And it, it's just going to be an insane payoff for another payoff, another way to make Chocobos more annoying in right. that. So, God, yep. It's crazy to me we're talking about Burbs in, in Opus 14 that like, well, this is like a top tier deck. But again, we all know whose well, fault that is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Leonis. All right. Now we've got uh, Diabolos. I like this artwork. This artwork's really neat. And I, I've kind of gone back and forth on this effect. Like, I think you do want the big effect where you have casted four. I don't know if you really care about just getting the non-four effect. And I was thinking about it like, well, okay, so you get to four, then you cast a Val of four, and that way they've all taken 3K. Like, I don't know. It, it, again, this is what I'm kind of having trouble rating because it's only one CP. It's really cheap, and I've seen how Windex can just brrrr with their CP, but I, I don't know. Like... I don't know. I'm having trouble evaluating this one. How do you see it? So I originally thought about this as like, okay, so this is a veil for combo card, right? Yeah. Is what I was thinking. And then, but like, it doesn't work when they have any buffs. So it doesn't work when they stern or anything like that. So it's kind of a little, not only is it a build around effect uh, in that you have to get to the cast uh, count in order to have it work. You also have to have it with veil for at the right time. And then for veil for to be effective, you have to put Yuna. And it's like, it, I don't think we have the card pool to make this kind of thing line up right now. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, we're seeing like a wind Yuna coming, a wind Yuna forward coming in the future. And uh, that's the kind of thing that gets me more excited to play like Veil 4 again and those kinds of board clears effects like Fina and whatever. And uh, if we get to that point, I think that this card will be part of that kind of, you know, board clear summon centric cast centric uh synergy deck mm -hmm. uh but i just don't think we have the card pool to to really make it effective right now uh that being said it'll be it'll probably be great in uh l3 l6 and limited it's just like a very very solid very very cheap combat trick yeah. at worst and that can be important in the in those formats specifically uh combat tricks are not important at all in standards so yeah. i i don't think it has that kind of thing going for it and then we just can't combo with it in standard so i think it's a little doomed on arrival but with an asterisk that uh it could be one of the key cards in kind of combo removal centric decks going forward we have to keep our eye on that one uh next we got another moogle Coop Oh, I don't know if I'd ever really use this over the other no-nos, but they're also very specific. But we do have another Moogle forward finally for Good King Mogglemog, which is cool. I say finally, he just came out last set. But uh, I, I don't know Moogles well enough. I don't know how you could abuse his activate all the other Moogles. Like, I don't know what you could then do off of all that CP. But just the fact that he's at least a new forward for Mogglemog to play maybe gives him some value. Yeah, I think you hit it on the head. Uh, the active is just going to be like when you're playing the Moogle deck, obviously the active is nuts, right? Like you're just gonna activate a bunch of stuff. Like you can attack and then activate all of your backups, activate all of your forwards. You can do it on your opponent's turn if you want. It doesn't have any text that says you can't. So uh, that works for, you know, Hope and Morali too. So basically your whole field is active. And uh, that's kind of unparalleled CP generation uh, in, in that regard. At the same time, it's coming at a pretty big cost. Uh, you don't get to play the backup no-no anymore, so there's fewer hits for your uh, King Mog. Uh, of course, we will play that one, in, uh, this one in that deck uh, over the, the old no-no. Uh, outside of the Moogle deck, uh, I don't really see this ever getting work done. Like, you have to put haste on it for it to do anything, yeah. but then you also have to have the backups to make use of the no-no yeah. and then that means you got to play backups so you can do whatever you want at that point like we're living in fantasy land at that yeah, point exactly. so <laughs> all right next we've got bart's looks like he's got a nice little social bow probably boko on there with him man yeah. i love warrior of light stuff but for me wind warrior of light was always the hardest to fit in i always personally liked the fire water version with like ferris and then all the ones from final fantasy legend and this one's very focused on that and he's crystal so he's warrior light and crystal combined 
there's some really good power there, but again, it's costly. You know, you need three crystals to be able to do that big recursion effect. And then, uh, but, but, but you'll also get them back when the Warriors of Light enter. So if you can make a Warrior of Light deck, I don't know if you do Wind Earth, Wind Fire, I, I don't know how you do that, but definitely a huge payoff there. But again, you got to build around it. Do you think if you're swimming in crystals, then this card is awesome where it's just like, okay, my opponent can never kill my Warrior of Lights because yeah. I'm just going to res them and then like do stuff. Uh, but like, I'm like struggling to get like two two or three crystals to like resolve Lena right now. And so I was like, it looks a little grim uh, for, for Bart's bottom uh, text right now. Uh, for the top text, uh, just get a crystal. And then it, when you have a crystal, he's a four CP 10K. Solid, you know, that's, that's, that's fine. Um, the, I think the big part is he doesn't get a crystal when he enters the field, so you have to like play him and then play another Warrior of Light. So I think this card is not really like getting there on just being like a small crystal generation package and anything. You kind of have to like go all in on Warriors yeah. of Light for it to be good. Uh, that being said, he's got fantastic synergy with Elena because mm -hmm. uh, Elena requires a thing and then, you know, Elena can get back something else. That's a Warrior of Light and then the Warrior of Light will give you back the crystal. So it's like getting stuff for free. Uh, we just don't have, like, the crystal generation right now to kind of, like, make that package stand out in Warriors of Light. Yeah. Uh, but if Warriors of Light get more crystal generators, they get more crystal consumers as time goes on. I could see this kind of, like, getting out of hand at some point as, like, a combo. Uh, but I just don't think we're there quite yet. Uh, I even tried building it, and it was just like, no, this doesn't work. Like, yeah. just, there's just not enough. It's, like, on paper, there's just not enough there. Yeah. Well, you know what probably will work really well is this new Philo backup we got. And I mean, this could have just been card name Philo, Job Sky Pirate, and had no text. And I think you would like it because the only other Job Sky Pirate backup we had was Tomaj, and he was water. So, okay, here's your wind water. And for some reason, Fine, they Fran. put on the text. Oh, yeah, yeah, Fran, Fran. Sorry, I always forget about her. For some reason, they put on the text, well, what if just all the Sky Pirate backups can just generate CP? So, if you just put this down turn one, boom, your color fixed. You got your wind and your water. Uh, and then it has a special, of course, on top of that just to boot. But I always like specials on backups because, again, additional copies of backups become dead cards later. So now here's one you get to feed into. It's just like, wow, what a what a great card to just help with a Sky Pirate package. This card is nuts because, like, it's not only is it great for the Sky Pirates, we we, we just wanted this color mm -hmm. combination in general. Like, we're like I'm playing this in a not Sky Pirate deck, just like in in Earth Wind, because it generates water, so that yeah. I can play the Wyatt now. Like, like we we we. This is just like the color combination that we've been wanting the entire game. It's like, what if I could play water cards at no cost in Wind decks? <laughs> awesome! <laughs> like, like. Now I get to play Leviathan in Mono Wind. Now I get to play Leviathan in Earth Wind because now I can. Now I don't have to play Tyro. I can just play Philo and Chantoto, and that, that's totally pl that's plenty, right? So uh, yeah, I think this is great, and the fact that it has an S just makes it sweeter in yeah. Sky Pirates. You can play three of this because you want to. Uh, you kind of like this is the one that you want to have down immediately. Uh, so because it color fixes and all that but you also want to get like the one ofs with van so that you don't have to draw them and play them later so if you can play this one as soon as possible then i think you should so i think this is probably you probably play like one fran one tomage and then three philo and you try to like draw the philo and and then play the other ones uh off of van sick Sky Pirates shooting to the moon now. Uh, here we have Maria helping out our Rebel package. I actually think she's kind of like the little mini engine for Rebels in the sense that, at least through combat, she's basically going to make them quote-unquote unbeatable in combat because not only is she given this massive power buff and they get stronger for each one you control, it, she also then reduces the damage they all see. So unless they have outright break effects, like someone's going to struggle to beat up your rebels in combat uh beyond that obviously she's you know low cost herself but i i do love the way her kind of power goes and so it, it kind of makes me want to try the rebels so yeah nice little nice little engine for him yeah i think if you're playing the uh the rebel stuff like this is the card that says like okay you can never lose combat again nothing is ever going to be big enough for mm -hmm. you to, to to block you it's going to make you draw cards off the of leon so yeah i think this is great uh i think the only problem is that you're playing a combat oriented deck in a, in a format that isn't so kind about combat yeah. in general. But, you know, if that kind of thing comes back around, there's definitely potential with this Maria card. Yep, absolutely. Uh, then we have Dragoon. It's our wind crystal generator. Do you have any other thoughts for it? 
Uh, it's another backup Dragoon, but yeah. we just don't have enough wind. So, like, that's something that Dragoon's always wanted. You know, like, the, the, the dream is just play a bunch of Dragoon backups in Alice and never have yeah. to play any other backups, basically. But uh, it's in wind, so it's going to take some time to, to get that build figured out. But if it works, it's going to be great. I hope the uh, pronunciation of our next card is Lud, because I, I, there's just a, a definitive Ud sound to it that, like, matches my disdain for this card not only do i just not like the artwork at all it, it just i mean is warriors even a thing i, I don't know just, uh, it's a it's, it's pack filler yep yep all right and then we have leon last of our rebels we kind of touched on him earlier with guy and maria you know, damage three obviously really cool to pull off of guy uh it's nice to see a leon that doesn't just get like brainwashed as some of the other ones have so i do appreciate yeah that. But again, just no cane syndrome. Yeah, cool, cool payoff <laughs> for your rebel package. That yeah. So once they get all huge, which they will because of Maria's effect, everyone's going to be drawing a card on attack. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, like, I think there could be something there. I'll have to test it out to be sure. But yeah, there, there's at least potential there. Yeah, I also think that one thing that we that might be overlooked about this card is that uh, you can play this card in Chocobos. You can so stern will stern will pump all of your like a bunch of your guys to above 10k and then you just uh, and he goes to two right so you you play him for two and then you just draw like three or four cards or whatever and then he yeah that's just the uh, the world we live in but uh <laughs> disgusting <laughs> all right next we have leiko hob hobhoka i'm not sure how to pronounce that name beautiful artwork uh, these kind of effects, man. These these worry me. I'm hoping it's still just a little too difficult to reach. But again, I've seen the things Wind Earth can do before, and just ugh, the idea of someone just ah, I'm just go fetch whatever eight cost or less that I want right out of my deck and slam it onto the field if you don't mind is really gross. So I hope this is harder to pull off than it looks. But I wouldn't be surprised to see my just getting my face kicked in by this. Uh, there's a I have a lot of thoughts about this card. Uh, I had. A conversation the other day about like whether this goes in chocobos as well uh i know we talk about chocobos a lot but that's just kind of the nature of the game right now yeah uh but yeah like you can just so if you play like chocobo knight fat chocobo and then you just play leko then you can just go get stern like at the end of the turn because you cast three cards like that's just how it, it works if you ever get to like five if you like fat Cho if you live the dream you know you fat chocobo immune fat chocobo play a play leko play a backup or whatever then you can go at end of turn like it goes to fetch bismarck which is you know kind of disgusting too at the same time i'm not sure that it's like ever going to trigger consistently enough mm -hmm. that i would actually want to put it in the deck and you know it, it takes away from the 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 chocobo count so i think the question you're really asking yourself uh about this card in that regard is is it better than mog ffb is it better than fiona uh, and yeah. if it's better than those cards, then you can put it in the deck. Uh, I kind of lean towards, you know, probably not better than those cards, but worth testing. Yeah, it, it could find a home there. Uh, on the flip side, is it just be like, what about like Mono Wind? What about Earth Wind? These cast decks, you know, yeah, yeah. like, is it good there? Uh, I think you have to ask yourself, like, what kind of targets do you have? Uh, people are talking about like splashing X Death. I think that's not a good idea. <laughs> If you're gonna get something with this, it's like Bismarck, it's like Fina, uh, Lock, maybe if you're playing it in yeah. Ice Wind. Uh, you can get, you can potentially get like Titan and stuff like that if you're playing Earth Wind. And, uh, you know, there could be something there. I think it's one short, it's because Leviathan is nine, so you can't get Leviathan with it, which kind of turns me off of playing it in like Earth Wind and Wind Water. Uh, so, you know, maybe there's something there, but it kind of seems clunky. It's a 4 CP backup that does absolutely nothing if it doesn't live. Uh, it can be Hecaton Chariot or Fanry or whatever yeah. before the end of the turn, which is really, really painful. And it requires a lot of setup to get to those number of casts in the first place. And when we can't even, like, play backups, it seems, a, a, like, a, a little bit of an uphill battle to get this card working. That being said, it, it's definitely one to keep your eye on. It could definitely go from... It's one of those cards that could fall completely flat and or be like best best combo card of the set yeah. at the, at the end, by the end. I won't cry if I don't see it. So uh, moving yeah. on to Rem, I don't know if you'd ever play this in Cadets over the EX Burst one, but I don't think you even care about that. It's kind of has that Althea effect that you just get to enter, activate something. If it dies, activate something. And it's just one of those ways to get crystals. So uh, if you like crystals, yeah. here's the, but you might even use it if you don't care about that. You might just use it just for the entry. This is my spoiler. So I talked about oh, it yeah, a lot. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, I talked about it a lot in my article, but this kind of opens up a lot of different... Like, we had a uh, Opus 1 Aerith that had the same entry ability, but that card didn't have a way to kill itself, and also it kind of got overshone by the other Aerith and Opus 1 when, when that kind of thing is happening. But uh, the entry ability is useful, and the crystal is potentially useful now that we see that, like, you have to have a crystal for Kane and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a shot that this card sees play. I'm going to try it in Mono Wind just like as a one or two of because I, I think that the Ochu and stuff like that presents a pretty good curve and the crystals uh, plus the killing itself part act has a pretty uh, useful niche and use case. Uh, that being said, it wouldn't surprise me if the card just completely disappeared. So. Yeah, same. Well, and in wind on the uh, Roma Mago, I believe it's pronounced. This is just pack filler, so nothing really to say about this yeah. one. Uh, yeah, so that'll be wins. That's fire, ice, and wind. That's part one, folks. Uh, we will be coming at you again shortly with the next video, and that will cover earth, lightning, and water. So stick around, Jared. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you with those next elements. Take care.